welcome to the Winning Edge Talk Show. I am Vishwanath, your host. I am a sports mind coach, kind counselor. I am an author, blogger, podcaster, and video maker. I have authored the book Success Mantra in Sports. I have trained many athletes uh, mentally, helping them to improve their overall uh, performance. And uh, today's episode is going to be on uh, India's tennis queen Sanya Mirza, who has announced her uh, retirement. Uh, to speak about this, I have with me none other than Mr. Kalyan Ashok. He was the former chief of uh, sports bureau. the hindu bangalore he has also worked with reputed media houses like indian express and deccan herald uh, welcome to the show sir thank you mr vishwanath it's my pleasure to be on the show again sir uh, sanya mirza is a queen of india tennis now she has announced her retirement 2022 is going to be her last year she has been uh, the greatest uh, icon as, uh, as far as uh, uh, tennis is concerned so we have seen great performances from indian uh, male tennis players uh, she has reached the pinnacle one in six grand slams uh, uh, with uh, uh, with other uh, male players in the mixed doubles as well as in the uh, women's uh, doubles now uh, india has uh, seen uh, several uh, uh, good tennis uh, women's tennis player starting from nirupama mankad rashmi chakraborty ankita bamri salsa hair mahat jain Shikha Devi, Ubarai, Prarthana Hun Tambare, uh, Achana Venkatraman, Tara Ayer, Nirupama Sanjeev, uh, who also took part in the Bangkok Asian Games, and she was the first woman to reach the top 200. And not but not the least, Ankita Raina. But why do you rate uh, Sanya Mirza uh, head and high over the others? Uh, what do you, what is the greatness you see in her, sir? Please. Uh, when you talk about Sanya Mirza. she's a self made player because because uh, she was trained by her father only mr rengran who gave up his career to uh, to put her in tennis and train her and make her a star and he saw some great potential in his daughter so he gave up almost everything in his career and he was owning a successful business in hyderabad and all that. but he wanted to make her a Uh, great player and uh, you see let me say one thing that uh, in the formative years uh, sanya mirza never had any support from aita so uh, as the current players are getting now okay that makes it uh, her achievements all the more uh, uh, creditable so she has come up the hard way she has fought her way to the top and she had the talent she had the dedication and uh, not to speak of a strong mental attitude towards the game and she is a fighter basically a fighter she never gives up see uh, when we compare the indian women's tennis players the way they were, they play the game it's a basically a baseline game they stick to the baseline and go and hit uh, stroke after stroke you know ground strokes and all the thing and till uh, oh, hoping for the rival to make a mistake in sanya's case is uh, totally different she sort of played uh, extremely well at the net she has a strong uh, forehand and uh, she is a right-handed double uh, uh, right-handed player with a double-handed backhand so uh, she used that fully and uh, got to the top in a big way it's purely her talent her dedication her hard work and uh, i won't give any credit to any other people except her parents and the later day is coaches also some of the coaches who come like you know mr krishna bhupati trained her a bit uh, in the early days then she was training with uh, other people like uh, even mahesh rohan and all that when she was going up and it has really helped her and and i see she practiced with men players mostly see unlike others she in playing with uh, men players gave a lot more uh, agility and a lot more strength and uh, to face a, a, a great uh, opposition is a better opposition playing a man is a 
a different ball game altogether so that is the way and as you you talk talked about other players see they are coming up all right and like uh, like ankita raina is coming up and she has been playing and she also played the qualifying round of the australian open recently now and ankita has won quite a few itf tournaments and all that see itf is a stepping stone for grand slam see in what happens in itf tournaments about $10000 $25000 and all that uh see you win or uh, reach a certain level in itf you get a gather enough points when you have a enough uh, number of points you are qualified to play in the grand slam so there is a way uh, either in the qualifying round or the main draw so that's how you got into it in sanya i think you know she became she, she played a lot of idf events also at so home and abroad and uh, she turned a pro- professional in 2003 that is a big achievement she first indian to um, make it to the top that way earlier we had one uh, player called uh, nirbhuma sanjeev she uh, she is from chennai and uh, coimbatore basically and she was based in italy okay and she played quite a few wta tournament and all that but she couldn't never break the ice in the sense she couldn't make it to the grand slam in a big way like uh, uh, sanya did so in nutshell sanya was a class apart from others so there is a way it is and it is sad that you know she is uh, ending her career after 2022 uh because of her uh, failing uh, uh, stamina you know the one thing is there you no know, she has been playing there for 20 years this is that's a quite a achievement you know so uh, not uh, many indian women players have gone to that uh, length of time and distance so we are going to miss her but what she has done for indian tennis is she has inspired a lot of young girls to take up tennis say there is a uh, quite a few a lot of indian uh, youngsters who wanted to be uh, i wanna be sania kind of uh, mood that is a quite a creditable achievement you know inspiring others with their uh, talent and the game and the success it doesn't come easy to especially among women players you know that is the way what she has done and uh, she deserves all the credit and all the uh laurels that came her way for her success and uh, rise in the game you told me that uh, you have been seeing sanya since her early teens when you first met her uh, maybe and uh, you have been met her later uh, several times uh, what did you see in her that made her the one of the greats of uh, indian tennis see i first met uh, sanya nearly about uh, when she was about 15 year old okay that happened in um, i had been to tennis village where i used to go off on the uh, where mr krishna bhupati had uh, training a lot of youngsters and and uh, mahesh was also was chipping in whenever he's whenever he was in bangalore at the time so one day i had been there uh, so mr bhupati introduced sanya mazza to me saying that you know this is a girl from hyderabad Uh, she has got a lot of potential she is going to come up uh, in a big way in the game uh, sanya was a uh, what is looking pretty slight and frail at the time and i was wondering you know what kind of uh, achievement she can do in uh, uh, tennis in a big way you know, because you know tennis really needs a lot of strength and mental and physical uh, strength and also body call you know, it needs a talent and other thing but uh, Uh, I asked uh, Mr. Uh, Bhupati, uh, "Do you really think so? She will, she can uh, come up, uh, become a great player?" And he said, "You watch me. Uh, in another uh, few years, she'll be among the top hundred player in the world." That's what uh, happened. No, by 2000, 2005, she has become one of the top hundred players in the world. so there is a great uh, prediction that was given by astute uh, coach mr bhupati who himself trained uh, uh, mahesh in a big way and made him a star so 
that is how i saw her later on i've been meeting sanya anand of like in america she was in bangalore but i don't travel much outside uh, uh, bangalore at the time and i was uh, whenever she had a training session here you know i used to come and uh, watch her and uh, uh, speak to her father imran was a very open person he used to tell me about her uh, 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 issues you know what he called you no know, that how he trained and uh, what kind of opposition or what kind of hurdles we they faced to come up and uh, become a good tennis family as such you know because it was a close knit family imran his wife and uh, sania had a sister called anam so all of them were together at the time so it has been uh, very interesting to watch uh, sania grow from a 15 year old uh, 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 potential star into a real star by 2005 2007 okay sir a young athlete cannot make it big without parental support yeah. in sanya's case it was imran mirza who was the pillar of strength for her speaking about her father sanya has said it is great to have a dad like him he dons many roles a mentor coach friend guide with so much ease he is the best role model for all those aspiring to make their kids good sports persons he never put any pressure on me and always assured that i was in a relaxed frame of mind irrespective of the uh, results you have met uh, imran mirza a couple of times what do you think of the man the coach of sania mirza for her to rate her father so high that he can be a role model parent for the Uh, other uh, sports uh, parents in the making uh, if i look at it imran was uh, what do you say you know uh, you can't rate him like a, a great professional coach as such but what his contribution to sania mirza's game was the fundamentals right fundamentals he taught her so that uh, stood her in a good street another thing he was a big uh, offered a strong moral support to sania in time of difficulty and she faced quite a few like you know uh, way back when she was started playing in uh, professional tennis wearing a skirt you know this is that is a normal attire for any women player uh, being a muslim and uh, this thing there are uh, quite a few conservative clergy who said you know you can't be playing the uh, without covering your full legs and all that thing other time now this she was pretty young at the time and uh, it has it has been some sort of mental pressure on her but you know imran said go ahead and play and all the thing i am with you over whatever uh, people might say or something like that it's only a small fraction and also she had the media support and the general public you know who said nothing doing uh, sania go ahead with this uh, uh, this thing game so that's what it happened like you know he, he was a guide a right, a right guide and he was always touring with her and uh, always uh, when she came to bangalore or any other place only when she became a total professional and started playing abroad and all the thing no imran was not with her but otherwise you no know, he was always there at her uh, beck and call like you know so there is that all the all the time supporting her and uh, uh, cheering up and uh, keeping her moral high uh that's the way uh, uh most parents should be doing you know for the tennis playing kids so they have to be with them like you know there are a lot of parents in uh, uh all over india you know who want the kids to achieve an immediate success and all that thing if they fail they tell them no okay uh, you tried enough and uh, get out of tennis and uh, concentrate on your studies and all that thing. Imran was not like that he simply allowed her play her natural game do whatever best you think can and try and do it and keep doing it and all the thing you know because uh, she was just an undergraduate she never pursued any academics after uh, junior college uh, see they left her I mean, uh, studies come uh, come later or even if it doesn't come 
uh, it doesn't really matter. You just focus on your tennis. That's the kind of support they are given. Like you know, that is uh, quite a, a creditable uh, attitude. You know, so uh, Imran's uh, contribution to Sania has been a, a very laudable one. Yes. So he must be a proud man after what uh, she's done, and after a long career of 20 years, he must really be a proud man today. And uh, yes, so Sanya at one time was ranked 27 in the world, yeah. the best ranking for any Indian male or female. This uh, had raised lot of hopes in her, but uh, she could not do much in the singles uh, category. Instead, she became a superstar in the doubles. Sir, why is it that India traditionally uh, has done well in doubles and not in singles, as far as tennis is concerned? Uh, quite a few reasons. Uh, Sanya, you said, uh, reached the highest ranking of 27. That uh, that happened in 2007, I think. In 2005, Sanya played one of her best matches against uh, Serena Williams. No, that was in Australian Open. Uh, she went through the uh, first four rounds in a very admirable fashion she decimated the opposition and unfortunately she had to run through run against uh, great serena williams no? the world number 1 at the time but she gave a good fight to serena at the time and she got the notice of all the tennis loving public and she became a very popular in uh, australia on that day in 2007 uh, her ranking uh, went up to 27 world number 27 and she was named by the world uh, sorry the women's tennis association that is called wta which is the uh, uh, controlling body and uh, administrative body of the uh, women's tennis uh, named her as the best player best newcomer of the year best newcomer of the year no indian women player has ever achieved that kind of uh, accolade in the uh, game and you are talking about uh, uh sanya is the uh, number 27 but you know in the men's section if you see you know there are a lot of people quite a few have uh, really achieved in a big way uh, if you know that legendary ramnathan krishnan was world number 3 at one time twice wimbledon uh, semi finalist he lost to uh, uh, rod uh, neil fraser and uh, rod lever huh but, uh, on those uh, in those semis and all that thing so uh, that way and uh, then we had his son no, ramesh krishnan ramesh krishnan was uh, ranked number 16 okay then we had uh, in top 100 uh, leander pace we had then we had som devarman so but they all the but you know that in singles it becomes a uh, tough grind for most of the players and because you know it needs see tennis is a game it's something like you know it played uh, almost uh, tournaments a uh, year and uh, you have to pick and choose your right tournaments to gather points and go up in ranking and also it's tough you see if you are playing grand slam it is about five sets every round is a five set match you have to play and it needs lot of stamina mental strength and uh, uh, tactical brilliance to stay in the hunt so that is uh, become often difficult for indian players to do that you know there is a way most of them have uh, opted to doubles because doubles is uh, where you have a partner and you are covering off the court isn't it so uh, it becomes much easier in the sense but you know another factor is uh, indian players take to doubles is because not only because you know the uh, they find it uh, is a easy option uh, secondly because uh, see it is the doubles that sustains their uh, professional career in a long, for a long term like you know rohan is now 34 35 is still playing and because it's just because of doubles singles career is over because you know way back uh, see about even a decade or uh, 15 years back you know he, he was tipped to be a top 100 player in the world but uh, it never happened so doubles is is a good option for the indian players to keep going and sanya did the right thing in the sense now she uh, 
quit singles in 2013 i think 2013 she quit the singles by 2015 now she is making big waves in the doubles she has won uh, between 2015 and uh, 2020 uh, 20 i think uh, she has won six grand slams three mixed doubles and three uh, women's doubles her best partners have been uh, in the men it has been mahesh bhupati and among the women it has been martina hingis martina hingis was a wimbledon champion she was a great singles player and uh, and uh, when she decided to switch over to doubles after some time uh, she forged a, a lethal combination with uh, sania mirza and uh, these two were dubbed as uh, santina that is yesay uh, yesay and for uh, sania and tina that is martina tina was to was santina and uh, they have a start of established a record you know in the women's doubles they won 44 matches straight without uh, losing a single tie that still stands as a record so that is the way and you know after uh, martina uh, martina sania broke up and uh, sania has been playing with uh, different players both in uh, uh, mixed doubles as well as uh, uh, women's doubles with a uh, limited her uh, success good and afan that she has been making quite an impact on the circuit till the australian open of 2022 now where she had to crash out in the women's doubles in the first round and uh, he and uh, she and rohan bopanna lost in the mixed doubles first round so she has basically felt you know that uh, her legs are giving up like you know basically you know so many years she have been playing it naturally affects tennis it's a game the physically demanding you are prone to injuries and uh, cramps and other thing so she sanya felt you know she is not up to the mark as well physically so she had to sort of uh, give it a break or uh, or uh, say goodbye to the game at least in the professional league another factor was she had a kid she is a 3 year old son now she is a mother she has been married to shoaib malik the pakistani cricketer they have a kid in a 3 year old and she has to take him along with her uh, for all the tournaments and also it's a demanding physically to be a mother as well as a, a player you know so that uh, there is always a a distraction is there so i think uh, she made the right decision at the right time i think to giving up so you have uh, just uh, come out with her uh, achievements in uh, doubles and uh, her winning the six grand slams and uh, and about her uh, phenomenal uh, success and with martina hingis what they went on to achieve winning so many straight game straight matches etc but she would have been the most happiest uh, tennis player woman if she had won a olympic medal if i am right i think uh, that is one ca- feather that is missing in her cap and uh, that has been disappointing for all of us in, and maybe also even greater with her uh, what has what happened there sir there were so many olympics when she was at her peak and uh, we expected her to win a medal but uh, that was not to be sir again if you look at it uh, olympics all the now all tennis players take olympics seriously earlier it was not like that so anybody can uh, drop out and all and now each one thinks the uh, olympic medal is a must so you have the best players in the singles as well as double stroke so that is the thing so the opposition is great and uh, very formidable formidable uh, what you call no rivals she had and uh, okay she couldn't make uh, much headway in the uh olympics but sir all students and that's what we have been noticing uh, that uh, olympics is a very prestigious event a very very pressurizing event even for the greatest in the world even djokovic has been struggling to win a single medal for his country i think he has one medal he has got in the doubles i don't i may be wrong but even he too he's been uh, you know see when it's you're playing for the country it's a different ball game altogether because there's so much pressure 
and uh, they are always looking forward putting lot of expectation on themselves uh, to win a medal for the country after all the all that uh, they have done to themselves uh, professionally but there is always that uh, additional player where pressure when you uh, perform a play for the country but sanya has also done well uh, in whenever she represents the country in other uh, uh, tournaments but yes you can't uh, have it all uh, so uh, it's been disappointing for her that she couldn't win a olympic medal so all right sir then uh, uh, she's 35 now and uh, as you said it's difficult for her to take her three year old son all over the world to take part in tournaments and uh, she has played for 20 years is that is by itself a, is a huge uh, achievement considering how taxing uh, uh, tennis is uh, physically and uh, so she has decided to uh, put down her racket and call it quits now but and uh, her husband is also close to 40 and uh, and uh, he's also at the sunset of her half his career maybe i thought uh, that if he had uh, supported her traveled her with her and uh, enjoyed her uh, professional uh, tennis accompanied her and given her a lot of moral support taking care of the son etc maybe uh, she would uh, have uh, two more years of game in her what are your uh, thoughts on this see um, shoaib malik is uh, still a, a good player for pakistan so maybe he may not be at his peak and all that but he makes a valuable contribution especially in the one day cricket and all he has his own commitments to play for pakistan yes. so now it is always difficult for him to travel to sanya or uh, encourage but but whenever he finds time he has been with her watch her match in fact you know uh, they met in australia uh, say uh, the first meeting i think they met in an indian restaurant that's what i have been told uh, so shoaib malik came to her table after seeing her and uh, said uh, can you give me a pass I want to come and watch your match and all. That. So that's how their relationship uh, started and all. That. They got married in Nairobi. So there is a way. And also you know that uh, marriage part of it has been a uh, uh, see in India we always make it a controversy about everything. Uh, even our marriage become a bit rocky. Papa, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's uh, one uh, uh, there are a lot of right wing groups or something like that they they said she has become a pakistani bahu and all that thing and uh, why under up questions why why she can't find a indian uh, groom actually sanya was engaged to a, a boy in hyderabad her uh, their family owned a, a bakery business in hyderabad so she she broke with him then uh, uh, shoaib malik came came to her, came into her life they got married they are happily married but uh, you know that they but uh, because of the travel and all the thing you no know, they they are based in uh, dubai mostly and uh, so there is easy point for them now she can travel to europe or uh, us or any other point to play and show him when as and when required by pakistan go to play for pakistan he, he goes and plays like you know she is very much liked in pakistan also because you no know, they think uh, that they uh, uh the Indian star has met a pakistani uh, player and uh, she is very popular she comes on tv in pakistan and all the thing giving a talk she conducted a clinic also for uh, pakistani girls and all that thing. so that, that's it. but one great thing about her now despite being married to malik she never migrated to pakistan or anything she stayed back in hyderabad only you know she still uh, represents india she is proud to play and she runs her academy sir she runs her own academy yeah yeah she yeah. now has an academy called sanya mizat and his academy so that's you know a lot of youngsters come and train there and all that so the results also keeps going so there are a lot of dedicated coaches are there with her. so uh, that part of it is uh, still going strong in hyderabad uh, sanya's career has been marred with controversies first about the kind of dress she wore and the fatwas issued against her and later marrying a pakistani and receiving a lot of flack and ire from the public and questioning her integrity yeah. and but she had was very tough to handle all these things so she must be a very tough woman to have taken all this first being coming from the muslim community and uh, 
then facing all these and coming up trans with our achievements and uh, i think it will take a lot of a uh, lot of uh, effort from any other indian tennis player to even come up close uh, to her as far as her achievements are concerned so thank you sir we come to the end of the show thank you for participating and contributing with your thoughts on sania mirza i think uh, you are the best person to talk about her i have known her since her uh, early teens so that was wonderful sir thank you for coming to the show thank you mr vishnuat it has been a great pleasure sharing my thoughts on sania with you and with the winning edge thank you